what up party people so uh, I figured I would just record another video here um, as you can see it got a lot darker happy winter uh, 2018 um, I thought it would be cool to build a little step sequencer just to show more um, more capabilities of tone JS uh, on CodePen. Um, it's going to be really elementary, fairly simple and basic. Uh, what we're going to do uh, for those that don't know, a step sequencer is um, you basically have these steps and you have a clock that goes from one to the next and then starts over. And at each step, if something is toggled, it'll play a noise. If not, it won't play a noise. Um, and so what we're going to do is have uh, three rows of eight boxes and each of those rows will represent an instrument or a synth and if it's checked it'll play a note, if it's not checked it won't play a note. Um, so the first thing we need to do is set up our HTML because we're just going to use HTML checkbox elements to do this um, and I'm going to be very... Uh, terse with my code here. Um, all we have to do is just build four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so if I just hit run here, you're going to see this. And we'll add a couple more rows. So we'll have three instruments. Each one is represented horizontally as a row. Um, and then we'll have eight different points at which it can play sound. Um, so there are eighth notes. So this would be the one and two and three and four and. Um, the next thing we want to do here is just hope our computer doesn't blow up. I'm using SAS because it's really easy to use on CodePen. You just select it here. Um, which is going to allow me to do uh, nested divs. Uh, so div, div. Um, we'll just say this div, text align center. And then this div, we can do something cool, plus div, margin top, one rim. Um, that's basically saying a div that comes after a div. So it won't apply to the first row, but it'll apply to the second and the third row have a margin top, um, which allows us to, uh, oh, come on now. Oh, I guess it probably doesn't like that because that doesn't make any sense. Cool. Um, uh, body div, there we go. We'll do this and then we'll say margin top for rem on the entire thing. Perfect. So each of these rows is going to represent an instrument. Each uh, column represents a point in time. Um, for those of you that didn't watch the last video, uh, we're including Tone.js. That's the library we're using. Uh, feel free to look back if you want to understand how that works. Um, the thing with Tone is we want to have uh, three instruments here. Uh, if, if, if we checked both of these boxes, um, a single instrument can't play both notes unless it's a polysynth, which we're not going to worry about. We're just dealing with monosynths. Um, and so in order to play two notes at once, we just create three instruments and play a note for this instrument, no note for that instrument, and then a note for that instrument. So um, what we're going to do is uh, create an array here. Uh, synths equals array new tone dot synth oopsies create three of those bad boys and um, we'll just have uh, we'll just do uh, synths zero dot oscillator dot type equals triangle since one dot oscillator type equals sine and since two dot oscillator type equals sawtooth. So each one of these is going to sound different 
and then synth dot for each uh, synth synth dot to master, and that'll connect it to the master channel for each of them. Um, I'm gonna just run, make sure we don't hit an error here. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to select each row, um, each div in each row. So I'm gonna do const uh, rows, and this is just a syntax thing that I do, which is dollar sign when I'm dealing with DOM elements. Picked it up back in the day with jQuery, and it might annoy you to no end, but I'm sorry. Uh, document, oh, this is what I'm gonna do. Instead of selecting each row individually, I can just do document.body.query selector all, um, which will be div, div. And so what that'll do is that'll select any div that's a child of a div. In our case, there's only three of them. So that'll be each row individually. So row zero will be the top one, rows one will be the middle, rows two will be the bottom. Um, so the next thing we need to do is set up our transport, tone.transport.schedule repeat. And we're just gonna pass in a repeat function and we're gonna fire this every eighth note. And then we'll define our repeat function. And remember, it takes the current time of tone. Um, and that's what we're gonna use when we play our sound. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the current synth, well, for let i equals zero, i is less than, uh, we could either do synths or rows. We'll do rows. Rows dot length, i plus plus. So this will give us a loop for each of our three things. Um, so we'll say let synth equal, let's see, dollar signs messing me up already. Uh, our synth equals synths i, our row equals rows i, and then um, we're gonna find the current step. So the step is gonna equal, actually let's define this outside of the loop because it'll be the same. Let step equal index modulo eight. Which is, um, which is the, the amount of columns we have. Um, so I'm gonna need to define index up here. And then at the bottom of this, we wanna be sure to index plus plus. And so what we want to do is find the input for the row. So we will say input equals row dot query selector string interpolation input nth child. And that's going to be step plus one. And so the reason it's plus one is because in our arrays, they start with a zero index but in nth child selectors in CSS, it starts with one is the first child. So if we're on step zero, we wanna find child one. Um, and so then we say, if the input is checked, synth dot trigger attack release, and then the current note, we haven't defined yet, so I'll just say note, and then it's gonna be play for an eighth note and it'll be played the current time. And that should be all we have to do. Um, the next thing that's missing is note equals notes i. And we just need to define notes. Equals an array. And the topmost we'll say is g five, the middle will be E4, and the bottom will be C3. So we, for each row, we find our synth for that row, our note for that row, our element for that row, the current input for that step in that row, if it's checked, play the note right now. And so 
I'm just gonna hit save. This shouldn't do anything yet. And tom.transport.start. And if everything worked properly, we should be looping right now, which means if I check this, there's our fart sounding little thing out. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a gain equals new tone dot gain at like 0 0.6 or something. We don't want it to be that loud. Gain dot to master. And then each synth is now going to connect to the gain. So this should not be that loud. It's a little better. So that's our step sequencer, which is pretty cool. Not that much code and we can make that. Um, a lot of improvements to be made clearly. Uh, the code could be cleaned up a bit. You could make an input range that affects the tempo. You could put an indicator in that shows the current state of the sequencer. Um, but I just wanted to give you a sense of like how little code it takes to build like a music I mean, this is an instrument, which is pretty awesome. Um, you could add more instruments. You could have the uh, like more synthesizers. You could change the amount of notes that are made or uh, available. Um, you could have that stuff be customizable, whatever. But at its core, the guts of what makes that sound happen is this simple. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Uh, keep coding. Don't give up. It gets easier. And uh, I'll talk to you later.